Inshallah. Inshallah. If there are no other more pressing questions, then we can deal with that. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. I don't want to uh, hold you and then we can start. Inshallah. We stopped at um, chapter three in Iman last uh, last week. Mm, yes. Have you started with the niyat of ta'lim and so on? Oh, yes. Let me do that. Fadal. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa'ina ta'lamu wa ta'lim tazakara wa tazkir wa nafa'u wa nitifa' wa fa'atu wa isifara wa laha sa'atu musikib kitabillah sunati rasulih wa dua ilal huda wa dalalat al-khair wa abtiqa wa jillah wa dhati wa qurbi wa sabi amin Allahumma amin I, we intend to study and to teach, to take and give reminders, benefit and assistance, and to inspire myself and others to hold fast to the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to call to guidance and to direct, uh, direct to goodness, seeking the continence of Allah, his pleasure, nearness and reward. Amin. Allahumma amin. Amin. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam al-ba'in Amma ba'ad um, So we have deliberated on the section of Tawheed Yes, uh, we began with the discussion on Iman um, in the, the last two meetings and then in the last meeting uh, I believe we have stressed on the notion of existence Yes, I believe we, we discussed the meaning of anta'tafid anna Allah ta'ala mawjud. That we believe that uh, we, yes, that the, the root of iman is to affirm that Allah exists. And perhaps we have also uh, started to deliberate on the second part, that he is wahid. Yes, that he is one in essence, he is one in, he is one in attributes, and he is one in actions. Um, <clears throat> That la uh, sharikalahu, that there is no partner unto him. Um, I suppose it is good before we begin to to follow on the next part, which is his uh, his creative aspect, to deliberate a bit more on the meaning of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's tawhid or unity. First, when it is said that we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is one, and that He has no partner, uh, no equal. Um, no likeness, we affirm based on the uh, arguments of reason as well as the guidance of revelation. In the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ilahukum ilahun wahid la ilaha illa huwa rahmanur rahim. And your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a singular God. You need to say there, there is only one God. That there is no other God than him and that he is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. That he is all gracious and all merciful. So, when Allah and then, uh, in another verse that clarifies the meaning of Tawheed, yes, is the um, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah of Purity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul huwallahu ahad. Say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Allahu samad, that he is unique. That he is the source of all existence. Lam uh, yalid, that he does not beget. Walam yulad, nor was he begotten. Walam yakun lahu kufu wan ahad. There is no equal unto him. As well as, of course, the verse of the throne. Yes, uh, ayatul kursi, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Allah, there is no other God uh, but him. Al Hayyu Wal Qayyu, that he is living and self subsistent. Yes, Al Qayyu. Uh, and when the Prophet وسلم, said Mu'ad bin Jabal uh, to, to do da'wah, uh, to call people unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to the people of Yemen, the Prophet said to him, In a cup, that you have now approached a people who amongst them are the people of the book, meaning to say, who are. Uh, recipients of the previous dispensation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. So therefore, the first thing that you should, you should call them towards is to, um, is to the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is interesting because uh, part of the belief in Tawheed in Islam or the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam is the affirmation that in their original forms, the teachings of the previous prophets, yes, all point to his unity. 
except that uh, the Quran also makes reference that some of these earlier versions of the revelation um, may have uh, the peoples of that 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 that. Uh, the recipients amongst the peoples or the followers of the previous prophets may have added unto it some ethnic creations and inventions of their imagination. Or perhaps they may have subtracted some aspects of it and corrupted some of the earlier, uh, earlier revelation. Well, Hasim, uh, the, the Quran, therefore, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent in order to clarify the truth and to affirm the substance of the truth in the earlier revelation and to complete yes, the, the command and prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa alladhi, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haq li yudhirahu ala dini kulli. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has sent his messenger. With guidance with Buddha, Wadin in Haq and the true religion, Liudhirahu, in order that it can be made manifest. Over all religions, meaning to say, in that it is the true religion. Yes, and in one verse, Allah said, Wakafa billahi shahida, and Allah is sufficient as witness. And in another verse, that 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 earlier uh, verse. Is completed with the statement "Walau karihal kafirun, or walau karihal mushrikun." Even though those who deny the message um, <coughs> may oppose it. Yes, Yuriduna uh, in in Surah Saf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Yuriduna yutfi unur Allah." There were people who endeavor to extinguish the light of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, i.e., His guidance, revelation, and religion. Wallahu mutim mururi. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall complete his light, even though uh, it is at the expense of the disbelievers, or they may hate, they may detest, it may, it may be deplorable unto them that he should do so. Well, Hasil, amongst the meanings of Tawheed, yes, Wahdaniyatullah, uh, the singularity or the uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to the gate, Tasawwuril uh, Kamiya, the uh, the uh, the predication of uh, quantity unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, attributes. Yes, quantity unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, essence, attributes, and actions. That was sifat wa akal. Yes, uh, of course, when it comes to quantity, uh, as the logicians and the metaphysicians and the mathematicians may agree, quantity is of two types. Uh, one of them is discrete, the other type, continuous. Uh, to explain this further, yes, when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence is one, it denies, it negates both predications of uh, quantity in the sense of a, a continuous quanti uh, quantity, what we call divisibility in his essence. So there is no divisibility in his essence. Uh, and it also uh, denies. Uh, uh, a partner and equal in the sense of uh, a discrete quantity, meaning to say that there should be another being like him. So his being is not divisible in parts and there is no being which is like him. This is where the essence is concerned. Similarly, in the sense of his attributes, yes, we deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes uh, consist of several qualities, yes, uh, as if he is a, a locus of qualities that co coalesce together. Uh, meaning to say that he should have um, conflicting will, he should have conflicting commands, he should have conflicting knowledge and so on. That, that rather it is one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coalesce together in an ima unimaginable qu uh, uh, quality, in, 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 uh, uh, in an imaginable quality to uh, creation like us. But it is one in, in, in essence and, and in, in sifat, in attributes. And uh, however, when it comes to actions, yes, al afal, then we only negate uh, quantity when it comes to um, uh, that which is uh, munfasil. Yes, al kamal munfasil fakat wa huwa ayakun ghairuhu yafal. Meaning to say the discontinuous type, as if to say that there is another being 
that could perform the actions that he performed. With regards to his own actions, then there are several actions which is attribute, attributable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like takhliq wa tarziq, meaning to say creation, giving subsistence, um, uh, causing death, causing life, and so on and so forth. Well, Hasil, this is the, 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 the perfect, uh, let us say, uh, this is the consuming understanding of uh, wahdaniya, of the singularity or uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, as we argued last week about the, the several philosophical arguments that, that can be ushered forth to, to establish the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet in terms of understanding the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uniqueness and aspects of the, the, the ilm tawheed or aspects of knowledge about him, only he is capable of revealing to us parts of that either through the form of revelation, i.e. in the Qur'an, uh, uh, which is given to the Prophet Muhammad to be, uh, to be manifested and to be uh, spread unto mankind, or in the form of reason and intuition as a result of contemplating such verses. And in several individuals, the uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge of him is established um, every now and then through empirical intuition, meaning to say through experience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is given by him. Then uh, Al-Habib Ahmad, Al-Imam Ahmad bin Zain, Al-Habshi continues by saying, wala mithla lahu, wala shabiha lahu. So the term mithil, yes, is a likeness, or, or rather mithil is uh, an equal unto him. Shabih, yes, Shabih means uh, uh, a similitude unto him. Laisa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'un basir. Quoting, yes, from the verse of the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is nothing like unto him wa huwa sami'un basir. And he is all hearing and he is all seeing. Al-ma'na annahu yajib ala mukallaf ayat takit anna Allah ta'ala la mithla wa la shibhala. Yes, that we have to believe that there is none in the realm of existence, yes, either in imagination or in reality, that is equivalent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that has similitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَيْسَ لَهُ تَعَالَ مُشَابِهِ فِي ذَاتِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَأَفْعَالِهِ There is no, no one like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in essence, in attributes and in actions. Because uh, this is the belief uh, that is affirmed by the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, yes, mukhalafatihi lil mumkinati dhatan wa sifatin wa af'alin. Because it is wajib, yes, it is wajib, it is necessary to us that <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from all contingent beings, either in the sense of an, uh, his essence, his attributes, or his actions. Imam al-Qurtubi said, yes, wal-ladhi yu'takat fi hadha al-bab, anna Allah la yushbihu shay'an min makhlukat. What we mean by the belief that there is no partner, there is no equal to, or, or uh, similitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the affirmation that nothing among his creation is like him. Yes, Wala, uh, oh, and that he resembles none of his creation. And even though we say, yes, that there are, uh, in his creation, there are certain things that, uh, that apparently, yes, in, in the wording appears to be, to be similar. Like when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing and man is also seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and some things in his creation also exist and subsist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and aspects of creation like man also hears and speaks and knows, and so on. However, there is an absolute difference between the, the seeing of the Creator and the seeing of that which is created. The hearing of the Creator and the hearing of that which is created. The knowing of the Creator and that which is, and, and, and the knowing of that which is created. Uh, to give an example, yes? Uh, when we say that a human being he, uh, sees, his seeing is limited by distance, either proximate, uh, proximate distance or remote type, meaning to say you 
can only see objects from a certain distance. If it comes closer to you, then the meaning of that object disappears. And similarly, as the object becomes more and more remote from you, it also disappears from your vision. Uh, likewise, obstacles of a physical type may prevent your vision. And um, your vision may be something that is strengthened and maybe that which, de which decreases and your vision may be taken away. Yes. And similarly, um, other attributes of man. Yes, that's why amongst the amongst the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creation of mankind from the state of da'af ila al quwa that he is created from a state of infancy, uh, a state of weakness until he becomes uh, stronger, yes, until he becomes, uh, his proportion becomes and, and his limbs uh, comes to maturity, his thinking and his uh, logical powers improves and all aspects of, of himself reaches a certain, a, certain, a certain state of strength and maturity before it declines. And this coming into being, this coming into strength is a sign that we are, uh, let us say, not sufficient, not self-sufficient, that we receive all these things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including our very existence, and it should be a cause of our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is the uh, what is uh, named by Professor Alatas as the recognition of our indebtedness to him, which is a prerequisite of our submission. Yes, the, the recognition of our indebtedness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to affirm that we are always uh, in constant need of his continuous subsistence in all types. And we, un we understand this also, that even at the, at the stage of maturity and strength, we are incapable of creating for ourselves our sense of vision what more when we were um, when we were in a state of infancy? Yes, how did we consciously move? And it certainly isn't our our own our own will that that, that we have moved. Yes, from the state of uh, let's say being in our mother's womb until we were born until we reached the age of in infancy. That is a, a a sign of our dependence on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And yet again, sometimes even amongst the, 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 the beings that he has created, some of which reflect and manifest uh, a greater proportion, <clears throat> a greater proportion of uh, uh, the, the, the optimality of, of certain organs, yet others he has made in some, some sense of deficiency. That is not deficiency in his, uh, in his power, nor is it a deficiency in his will or knowledge, but that is a, is a manifestation. Yes, rather of his perfection, that some should be made lesser and that some should be made more. Because this is a, 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 amongst the wisdom that we, we observe in the entirety of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walhasil. Ida sifatul qadim, bi khilafi sifatul makhluk. So therefore, uh, this is to clarify that although there are aspects of uh, resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, this is not in an absolute sense, yes? Although there are, there are aspects of, uh, as we said just now, uh, in terms of true meaning, ma'na uh, al-haqiqi, it is not the truth. Because one is uh, self-subsistent, the other is dependent. One is eternal and abiding, the other had an absolute beginning and only becomes eternal through the subsistence of the Creator. So that, uh, thus, the uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well maintained, yes? And we do not succumb to any of the paradigms of pantheism, nor do we succumb to this, uh, you know, the notion uh, that aspects of creation uh, should be equivalent to the creator. Well, Hassan, because uh, furthermore, the term, uh, when it comes to created beings, yes, we are, uh, we are associated with accidents, what is called arad, yes, in the terms of the mutakallimin, uh, in the terms, uh, in the terminology utilized by the theologians, um, everything in creation consists of essence and, and attributes, or rather essences and accidents. Uh, let us say there is a, um, your, your subsistence in, in existence, now that's your essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to that essence attributes, like seeing, hearing, and so on. Uh, and then uh, uh, as, as primary qualities, and then upon that are secondary qualities like uh, your perception of colors, your, your sense of taste, uh, your sense of smell, and so on and so forth. One upon the other, you know, one 
uh, one fold upon another fold, such that every every layer of this existence is separable from the essence to the to, to such an extent that uh, in truth, in all aspects we are indebted to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yes. So therefore, stripped of uh, stripped of these several layers of of gifts from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we remain in poverty. Yes. Uh, this is uh, al fakr the, the the attribution of poverty to human creation. Just as he, he has made us knowledgeable, we came from a state of ignorance. Just as we have now become existent, he, he was the one who drew us forth yes, from the state of non-existence, or who drew us forth from the realm of his knowledge, and he endowed us with the attribute of existence. While, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be predicated of any of these uh, deficiencies and, and, and blemishes and any lacking in his essence. Well, Hasid. So uh, the term in Arabic yes, to, to signify resemblance, similitude, uh, equality, and partnership is sometimes the word shibi, yes, uh, resemblance. This is where, uh, according, to the, uh, according to the linguistic experts, the lexicologists, uh, the meaning of shibi is um, that one thing should resemble another in most of the aspects, yeah, serupa in in in, in Malay, yes, serupa that is shibi. So you can say uh, this person is a likeness of that person. When most of the aspects there are similarities. As for al mithil, when you say this is a, a mithil of that, that means it is the similitude in the jami al uh, wuju in all aspects they are the same, yes. And as for nadir, it is a. Uh, a person who is comparable to another person. Yes, and that's why, you know, sometimes uh, part of the hyperbole of the poets that, you know, you sh he should praise a lady of his liking to say that your beauty is beyond compare. But in truth, you know, no beauty is really beyond compare, isn't it? Uh, where, uh, whereas everything in, in the realm of creation, yes, when we say someone is beyond compare, perhaps that the only attribution that is deserving of that statement is that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because truly, he is the best in creation. Yes, he is beyond compare in the in the sense of the, the realm of creation. Allah subhanahu wa taala endowed him with the perfection of attributes with, uh, uh, possible amongst creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yes, but uh, an nadir therefore, uh, the 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 comparability is when a person should resemble another person in several important aspects yes the nadir so you have methil shibih and nadir uh, and all these three is not predicable of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to any of his creation uh al al-isfahani yes the one who has written the uh, the book the mufradat al fad al quran who has written a, a lexicon of the terminologies in the quran said um the word methil is the the most general uh, of terms with uh, in the in the subject matter of resemblance yes walihada so therefore since it is the most general it encompasses all the particulars so therefore when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should choose a, a, a term reflecting the uniqueness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes he uses the word laisa kamitli that there is nothing like him shay'un yes so therefore it encompasses all three Shebe, Nadir, Wal Mithil. Okay, so I think that should be sufficient to, to discuss the, the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uniqueness at, at this limitation. There are certainly uh, greater books in the in the in the Islamic religious and intellectual tradition to discuss the uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is inexhaustible, certainly. Uh, but let us move to the next section, which is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. He said. Uh, the author Imam Ahmad bin Zain al Habshi said, "Khalaq al Samawati wal Ard." He created the heavens and the earth. What does it mean to believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created the heavens and the earth? The word "khalaq," as predicated of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, does not merely mean the the creative act of bringing something into existence. The term "khalaq," I mean that bringing something into existence does not do justice to the, the actual act of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation because there are other features 
of that creative act. Yes. Rather, when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth, it means that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heavens and the earth. Yes, well, count and everything else in existence. Bima fihi, yes, bi itqan. Yes, through a word which is uh, which in Arabic is signified by the letters itqan. Atqana yeah? shay. Uh, how do we translate this into English? The term atqana, ataupun uh, the, the, the person is a mutqin, um, is in English, there appears to be a dichotomy, isn't it? When you say something, is uh, is created uh, uh, in a in a scientific manner. Uh, the, the the kinds of uh, products which engineers um, are fond of, they are usually created with mathematical precision, isn't it? Mathematical precision, um, uh, following uh, you know systematic orders, uh, and it follows the rules and regulations, and it uses the best material. So that's what we call precision. Yes. Uh, however, beautiful objects uh, are usually the crafts of, say, the architects and artists and painters. Uh, but when it comes to itqan, it is a combination of both. Yes, it is both mastery, precision, and perfection. Yes, which is why, amongst the ulama of the uh, of the religious tradition of Islam, you can see that in their great works. These both of these aspects are present, such that uh, you will find some of the authors who have written, you know, scientific treatises uh, as a poem. Yes, the um, Al Jabar uh, Al Mukabala, yes, the principles of algebra by, by uh, Al Khawarizmi is written in a poetic manner. Um, some scholars are fond of um, writing treatises, yes, treatises. Uh, you see, the, in the Latin tradition, the treatise is usually very terse, dry, because it's meant to, 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 to deliberate on a scientific topic or on a philosophical or theological topic. It's very terse and dry, and, and sometimes there, there are commentaries upon such treatises. But in, in, in the religious tradition of Islam, uh, the treatise is the matan. But our scholars are also fond of turning mutun into uh, mandumat. Yes, the nazam. Uh, so there is a nazam in in uh, in the science of tawhid. There is a nazam in the science of hadith. There is a nazam in the science of fiqh. So even for the most scientific, logical subjects, there are it is written in a poetic manner. And uh, in in more recent times, of course, you can see this in the writings of uh, um, uh, or, or rather closer to whom we can see this in the writings of Sheikh Hamza Al Bansuri. Who wrote, who wrote the Asrarul Arifin in verse, and then its commentary in in prose. Yes, in uh, the the first he writes uh, the Shair of, of 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 the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the the signs of wayfaring to him in a verse manner, and then he he comments upon it in in prose. And Professor Nakib Al Atas, as uh, in uh, a, a person closer to our times, if you read his Risala untuk kaum Muslimin. And you read his other other words. It's it's both poetic and at the same time scientific. So that's that's closer to the meaning of itqan. Yes, that it follows uh, uh, it follows scientific mastery and precision, but there is also uh, beauty and perfection. Uh, and it is unfair for me to have said that that the, the the Western tradition fails or lacks in 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 that manner because we can we can point to several examples like the. Um, the Divine Comedy of, of uh, Dante Alighieri, which is said to have um, translated into verse the Summa Theologica of, um, of Thomas Aquinas, which is said to have translated into verse the Summa Theologica of Aquinas, which is more known for its um, philosophical precision and, and logical mastery. Uh, but the but the uh, but the divine comedy is more regarded as a as a painting in words. Let us say what has it. Uh, so where do human beings learn these things? Certainly from their Lord Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who is the source of beauty and perfection and precision. Yes, and we find in Surah An-Naml, uh, the the surah of the ends, in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, "Watar al-Jibal," and you you look at the mountains. 
and you assume the mountains to be stationary. You, you, you consider them to be stationary. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it moves yes, at the speed of the clouds. Yes. Tamurru marras sahab. It moves at the speed of the clouds. If we were to infer the internal meanings of this, uh, we can say that the, the, jab, uh, the Jabal, the mountains, yes, magnificent uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is created as pegs, uh, meaning to say it stabilizes everything else around them. Yes, it is as pegs, yes, or as nails unto the earth that, that stabilizes everything around them. Flora and fauna are supported by the existence of mountains. The, the mountains ensure that the, uh, the inhabitants around it are protected from um, protected uh, from quakes and protected from other uh, other other crises and disasters of the physical type. So similarly, uh, yet they move at the speed of of clouds, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, because the Earth yes rotates around its axis, and the in, in the planetary objects are ever in in, in constant tasbih of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, the the Sufis they make uh, an um, uh, an ishari tafsir of this by saying that uh, similarly uh, the case of strong individuals in a community the leaders in the in the community the spiritual leaders are as mountains in the community their existence ensures that the rest of the members of the community remains on the path of truth and justice and the path of morality and the path of uh, uh, and the path of taqwa and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The existence of such men and women of, of strong spiritual connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, uh, as mountains. And you see them as firm, meaning to say that they, they, do, they do not move from the, the right positions. They do, not, they do not move from established positions, that they are consistent in their life. And at the same time, however, they move at the speed of um, of clouds in the sense that they are dynamic personalities, meaning to say they are capable of protecting their people from confusion and error in knowledge. Yeah, so that's one meaning of mountains amongst, uh, amongst peoples. Well, has it. But ultimately, both are uh, in the sense of spiritual men and women, uh, as well as physical mountains, both are the products of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Allah di atqana, dhalika sun'id, Sun Allah, that is Allah's creation. And then he said, Alladhi atqana kulla shay'in khalaqahu perfects all that he creates. Or rather, who, who creates with this, this term, atqan, meaning to say precision and mastery. Now, yes, so therefore we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything in the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created fi ghayat al-itqan. Wa huwa dalilun wadi ala sani' al-mutkin al-hakim al-alim. And this is a, a clear sign that our creator, the divine artificer, is the most perfect creator who, who creates everything with mastery and perfection. Supposing, yes, in more recent times, um, i.e. we are talking about modernity, or even before that, the age of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, there were several Western philosophers who challenged this. Uh, you know, there were people who revived the, the argument from evil, and then there were people who satirized the perfection of, uh, of God's creation, uh, amongst which was uh, Voltaire, you know, who wrote a satir satirical novel about uh, God's perfection called Candide, I believe. In that novel, he, he imagines the, uh, you know, uh, uh, a Professor Pangloss, which is a, uh, his uh, parody of uh, Leibniz, who was a, a German philosopher, who, who I'm, I'm sure must have derived some of the arguments from the Kalab tradition uh, to, to, to defend the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God's creation. In uh, Leibniz's terms, this world is the best of all possible worlds, that of all the worlds that God could have created. Yes, following from his wisdom, this is the best of all possible worlds. So in a, in a satirical manner, Candide, you know, wrote of, a, of a, this person called Professor Pangloss, um, who have, you know, who had to undergo several of the disasters in Europe, uh, like the Lisbon earthquake, and, and following a, a series of disasters one after the other, and in which he tried to, uh, 
um, miserably and in a cartoonic fashion, uh, in a caricature, of course, uh, he always ends up uh, trying to defend the statement that God, you know, has created the best of possible worlds. What uh, Voltaire and the others, you know, following his line, yes, Voltaire's, child, Voltaire's children, let us say, among the thinkers of the Enlightenment does not realize, is that even, yes, the disasters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this world follows his pattern of perfect wisdom and mastery and perfection. Uh, what he does not know or what his, he misrepresents in writings such as Kandi is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything based on the laws of perfection. And we know that in the uh, accessible to men, are several laws. There is the law of philosophic reason or logical reasoning, what we call hukum akal, yes, uh, which consists of possibility, impossibility, and necessity. We deal in logical matters. There is the law of scientific observation, hukum adi, meaning to say how we come to knowledge that fire burns, how we come to knowledge um, uh, that, uh, let us say, uh, objects that that uh, that is being burned expands how do we have to, to come to knowledge that let's say water boils at 100 degrees and so on these are true observations which reveal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's customary way of acting in several of its aspects thirdly there is the hukum shara yes the 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 hukum or the laws and regulations which is dependent on revelation meaning to say only after having coming into contact with the revelation we can discover these laws, yes, and these laws are the laws of wajib, haram, makro, sunnah, yes, mubah, and so on. Meaning to say, uh, only with divine revelation can we truly discover something which is wajib. And as Imam Al Ghazali defines that which is wajib in the iqtisad and i'tiqad, he said that which is wajib it can only be known through coming into contact of revelation because the wajib is that which, if you were to leave it, would lead you to definite harm either in this world or in the next, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. Well, Hasim, uh, since his vision of reality and truth is so limited, so he considers that these, uh, you know, these, these disasters, natural disasters or otherwise, uh, has no relationship with the actions of mankind. And since his, his vision of life is so limited so as to only be able to perceive the vision of this world and not the next, yes? He does not see the divine dispensations of justice and truth in the afterlife. In the vision of the Muslims, we understand that everything that has uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so predetermined will come into existence following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, wisdom and following his justice. So if he punishes, he punishes out of justice. And he has said that, you know, he does not punish a people until he has sent uh, prophets to remind them. And he will not punish a people except that they have wronged themselves over the, the course of certain period of time. And after that, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his punishment, he sends his punishment. And that at the same time, uh, due to the existence of certain individuals, he may delay or alter the punishment, like the case of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But all these things that pertains to the, the rules governing the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with mankind and creation in the sense of him sending punishment and, 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 and uh, expanding his mercy, this is only known through contemplation of revelation. Let us say when you look at the Quranic verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كُنَّا نُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كُنَّا نُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ We shall not punish them, Allah said. We shall not send our wrath upon them for as long as you are amongst them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of uh, honoring the Prophet, out of his love for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mushrikeen in Makkah, yes, the polytheists, the enemies, the opponents of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite their, or in spite of their uh, opposition to, to the Prophet, in spite of their, uh, uh, their incandescence, or, or rather their, um, uh, their inada, they are, they are being obstinate against the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, and their persistence in their evil ways, they were not met with the 
punishments that were given to the previous peoples of the previous prophets. And this is out of honor of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and out of the honor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has deigned it that uh, the, the world would, would continue to survive for 1,400 years. Yes, and also because of the amana that has been taken care of by individuals within the prophetic community that, that has inherited yes, the, the, the prophetic knowledge and inherited the prophetic duty of, uh, of propagation and of reminding people of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, so this is our, uh, our counter uh, to Voltaire's uh, limited and corrupted vision of reality and truth. That in we 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 defend the position that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created the universe in the most perfect of manner. Uh, except that vision, uh, the vision of man pertaining to Allah, pertaining to uh, creation and reality, is is limited based on the capacity of their knowledge. وقال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد أفلا بينظروا إلى السماء فوقهم كيف بنيناها وزيناها وما لها من فروج. There are several verses of this type. In which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talks about the perfection of His creation of the heavens and the earth and everything that which is in between. Uh, so therefore, I think uh, that ought to be sufficient with regards to discussing the the notion of um, creation as tahlik. Inshallah, in the next uh, in the next meeting, we will discuss the creation of life and death and other aspects of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's creation. Um, we still have some time, I suppose, for some questions, uh, retorts, uh, comments. Tafadal, uh, over to you, Hussein. Every other time, I can hear you. Well, Hussein, you're muted. Yes, I'm muted. Yes, I'm muted. Yes, I'm muted. Yes, I'm muted. If you have a question, please speak up or, uh, I don't know, notify Hussein. Yes, uh, you can ask through the chat box as well, uh, or uh, maybe just say it. All right, Lee. Inshallah. Maybe, maybe I can start. Uh, so, uh, if um, how do we explain to the to at least to the to the non-Muslim or even to the Muslim as well on the on the calamity that happens on this on this on this world. How to how how we define yes. how we mention that yeah. If you, yeah. Yes, as as I have been saying, um, and perhaps uh, to add a bit a bit more, uh, we know that the life in this world um, is created together with limitations. Life in this world. Is not the entirety of existence as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned. It is merely a, a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beauty and perfection uh, within the, 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 the limits of space and time, within the limits of human history, within the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set forth. Yes. And within this, this, this limit of, of series and events, yes, the meaning is determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. Uh, placement of human beings in a series of, of history and different types of human beings have different types of actions, intentions, uh, volitions, and all of this um, subsists within the great uh, narrative that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined for mankind in which he has spoken of this to the angels. Yes, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the angels, he said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I shall bring forth upon this earth my vicegerents. Then the angels responded by saying, Will you bring forth upon it who will, uh, who will spread corruption? Who will shed blood? Yes. Whereas we constantly pray, uh, praise you yes, and we glorify you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In a'lamu ma la ta'lamu indeed. I know that which you do not. Yes. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals some things to the angels, yes, including the knowledge of what will happen. Yet he reveals to them gradually when he brought forth Adam alayhi salam before them and he said, 
after having taught Adam the names of all things, meaning to say the, reali the, the realities symbolized by the names of all things, uh, then he asked, uh, the, he asked the angels to name these things and they were incapable. When they said, Subhanaka, you know, all glory be unto you. There is knowledge that we, there is no knowledge that we have except that it is taught by you. Uh, and then Adam, uh, after having shown the, his capacity, we need to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the seal into the, into the being of Adam alayhi salam that signifies knowledge of truth, reality, and the capacity to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the angels knew, yes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is certainly wafawqa kulli the ilmin adi. That above all that has been given aspects and parts of knowledge is the all-knowing, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, as we see the, 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 the journey of mankind in history, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined that there were going to be prophets after prophets, dispensation after dispensation, until the finality of the messengers, which is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then there is the period of time in between the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should determine the absolute end of everything. We were created in this world, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala To determine who amongst you is, is the best in actions. So therefore, with all these basic presuppositions in our minds, how do we give explanation to the existence of calamities, of crises, of disasters? Well, disasters will be sent down to mankind from time to time. Yes, in order that they may return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because had he not sent tests, trials, and tribulations, then mankind, you know, inordinate, uh, 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 rather obstinate beings as we are, uh, we will continue and, and, uh, and, and, be, uh, uh, and be, let us say, deviated by our own whims and desires, as mankind start to follow their whims and desires, yes, they are hawa. Uh, if they follow their whims and desires, they will want to live forever in this world because they, they have been created in, in such a manner that their nafs can overpower them. If they incline towards their nafs, then they will want, then they will create corruption and they will then shed blood as a result of, of, of the corrupt, their corrupted natures. Uh, the corruption of their behavior may lead them to, 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 uh, to, uh, to injustices uh, unseen in the rest of the realm of creation. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will therefore send from time to time prophets. And when the prophets have de uh, delivered their message and the people remain and persist in their obstinacy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may decide to wipe the earth from them, clean the slate of them, and allow a, a, a new group of people to inherit them. Yes, to, to, to observe the amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the case with the previous prophets. Yes, we be it Prophet Saleh and Prophet Hud, Prophet Nuh. Yes, they, they were, were, were a people who were, um, you know, who were extreme, who, who, were, uh, who opposed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. And so one after the other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brought uh, calamities upon them, brought disasters upon them. And... Uh, in order that, that mankind can begin from a, uh, from a new start. And from time to time until the final dispensation, in the case of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the true trial of humanity. Whether or not we are capable of, of remaining true to the amanah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Until he has, um, uh, as we know, as we... Uh, as we study from the ahadith of the Prophet وسلم, and certain indications in, in the Quran uh, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide to try, uh, to try mankind with the greatest fitnah that all the prophets have warned us yes, uh, the coming of the awar al um, the blind uh, deceiver or, or rather the half-blind deceiver which is the Dajjal, uh, the, the Antichrist when man, humanity will, will be tested, yes, under the leadership of uh, the Imam al-Mahdi, the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, uh, against the trials and the fitnah of this awar al -Kadab. So therefore, the, uh, the people of truth will always be, be challenged by the people of falsehood. And, and, and this world is a realm of trials and tribulations in order to test us. It is not the realm of permanence. So no wonder that there should be from time to time calamities and tests. And, and those who are tested either prove to be victorious 
Yeah, so how do they measure their, their victory and success? Well, through their holding fast unto the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Husnul Khatima. The ultimate significance of existence will be known when we are resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, uh, when a portion of humanity will be counted amongst the sa'i, yes, the happy and blissful, and the shaki, those who live in permanent dissolution, in permanent uh, suffering, and, and uh, let us say, the punishment and wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu a'lam, I hope I have answered your question. Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Can you hear me? Waalaikumsalam. Yes. Um, I have a question. Um, you know, in the Quran, there are many verses where Allah says, He will give hidayah to whomever He wants and lets astray whomever He wants. Why then, I'm trying to understand this, then why then does He punish those that He has chosen to let astray? Mm. Yes. Uh, well, there is a, as, as the scholars have, have given tafsir of verses such as this, it is in the context of the other verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for example, in Allah yajtabi ilayhi man yasha. Allah subhanahu, or rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses uh, to, to bring to him whoever he, he desires. Yes, wa yahdi ilayhi man yuni. And he guides to him those who turn towards him. Uh, so when it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides certain of his uh, creation, and let's astray the other. It is through the, the proclivities within them, the proclivities that are found within them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given mankind freedom to, to, to act according to their proclivities because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, um, Inna hadaina sabila imma shakiran aw kafura. We have given them, uh, we have shown them the path. Either they are thankful and grateful. So their gratefulness is, uh, is, uh, is manifested through their seeking more hidayah, seeking knowledge and amal, through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them even more guidance, or imma kafura, or they deny. Uh, so if they, become, uh, if they become deniers of the truth, then they will be led to follow their own desires until they, they, they become fully led astray. So in other words, when, when it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides unto him whom he wills, uh, it is... Uh, it is a manifestation of the in, in, internal proclivity of the human individuals. And this is part and parcel of our belief in the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah Aqidah in what is called Al-Kasb. I mean, it is it, uh, the, the, the doctrine of Kasb or earning. Um, we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything. Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma'ta'amalun. Allah is the one who created you and that which you do. But that creation, yes, of that which you do, yes, uh, will, uh, meaning to say, is the takdir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dispensation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The takdir, however, uh, will manifest in the sense that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do injustice to any individual. Uh, so, ma'asiyah, or uh, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, willful disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becomes possible as a result of his creation of that act, but he creates that act in consonance with the internal proclivity of the person. In other words, there are certain individuals or perhaps several individuals who intend to do bad, but they are not given the capacity, the capability to do so, meaning Allah does not create that capacity and capability to do so, just as there are those who desire to do good and uh, they are not given the capacity and capability to do so. But yet, when the desire and, and, and the intention to do good and, and evil is met with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, then it is accompanied by either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rida, contentment when it comes to ibadah and obedience, and it is met with uh, wrath and punishment when it comes to the, the, the acts of disobedience. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, guidance is like that. Yes, man jahadu pina lana hum subulana. Whoever struggles in our path, then we shall, guide, uh, we shall guide them, we shall show them our different paths. So, wallahu a'lam, in, in, in short, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not compel anyone to guidance, nor does he compel anyone to misguidance. Yet, human beings, yes, they, they, they act as, as how they have uh, freely 
been given by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why in the akhirah uh, it is said that if he were to reward and he were to compensate, if he were to forgive, this is out of his mercy because he's not compelled to do so. And if he punishes, yes, should he punish, should he um, bring some of his creation into, into hellfire, it is out of his sense of justice. Yes, because you have earned what uh, you know what you intended. You have earned what you desired. Yes, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's misguidance is is a result is a, a basically a, a consequence of your continuous obstinacy. But His guidance is as a result of His uh, uh, meaning to say, as Allah Subhanahu uh, uh, in, in, in another verse He said, "In Allah you sunli." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who inclines to the believers by drawing them out of the, the, uh, the dhulumat, of the, the darkness, and to the path of light. Wallahu a'lam, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Um, he, um, he gives um, us human beings free will uh, to choose good or bad uh, in our actions. And we will, if we do good, we will be rewarded, and if we do bad, we will be punished. Um, but then, you know, what I asked earlier is he had already decided whom he will guide and whom he will let astray. Yes. He knows what we're going to do, so, yes, because that's what said. he knows what we're going to do because he has. Mm -hmm knowledge of the future so everything is was you know pre-written so he knows what we're going to do yeah uh, because and and and, and also uh, he gives us free will to decide um good or bad but then at the same time uh, he also chooses whom he will guide and whom uh, will be led astray yes Yes, so that's 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 the summary. So he chooses whom he guides and whom he lets astray. But he has also revealed to us uh, amongst his servants who does he guide and who does he let astray. And his leading astray, his servants is due is due not to his uh, misguidance, but due to the proclivity, as we said, due to the uh, the provenance of that individual refusing to be to be guided. Yes. But if, if the person were to, to, to desire guidance to, uh, and to desire forgiveness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving, all which merciful. One, uh, but which, yes, go on. which one comes first? Which one? Which one comes first? Uh, the the, the, the um, action arising from free will of mankind or Allah's uh, pre... Um, determination of whether he will give him hidayah or otherwise. Okay. So, first and foremost, um, of course, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates anything, he has already perfect knowledge of everything before it comes in, in, in the realm of existence. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, you know, that which happens in the world does not surprise the creator. Otherwise, that would be in, uh, that is impossible to be predicated of him. Meaning to say, there are certain things he is ignorant of. However, yeah. uh, when it comes to the creation of man, mm -hmm. yes, he has uh, certainly already preordained everything in a series of events that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has determined. This is what we call qada. Yes, qada is that aspect, the preordaining of things, and qadar is the coming into being of that which he has preordained. Now, when therefore we we follow this this uh, let let's let us say this series of events in life then as we we live yes we will understand the unfolding of the events we need to say while he creates it in such a manner all the individuals who subsist within this great manifestation of his takdeer they all were not compelled to do so yes in in knowledge in, 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 in creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has known everything. But all individual, yes, based on their istiadat, based on their potentialities, only manifest that which is already contained within them. So, 
uh, so therefore when when certain individuals among this creation yes when uh, when they are disobedient they were willfully disobedient uh, maybe out of ignorance uh, maybe also out of obstinacy but nonetheless yes they are they are they are being misguided in the sense it's not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compelling them to do so but of course nothing escapes his, his knowledge yeah. and we will understand in the in the yawmul akhirah in the day of resurrection uh, the wisdom behind these things mm. uh, but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given ample opportunities for every individual because as he said you know wasi'ta kulla shay'in rahmatan wa ilma he encompasses everything with his uh, his mercy and his knowledge and that his mercy yes kataba ala nafsihi rahma his mercy over, overcomes his wrath um, and when you look at how he has arranged it first uh, forgiveness is open to anyone who is willing to seek forgiveness and he said in the hadith al qudsi that he does not care at whatever state that you have uh, that you have you have wronged yourself if you seek forgiveness then forgiveness is given second he has given ample amounts of warning and he has given and sent prophets in a clear manner and he has also given caveats to that like when he said that we will not punish a people until we have sent them prophets like that so there are people who live say in between prophets so they are free from this responsibility and then we add to that the fact that uh, there are multiple opportunities of forgiveness that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given multiple opportunities of, of guidance that Allah has given. So those who truly oppose this message, yes, uh, must oppose this message out of truly, um, you know, hatred, uh, obstinacy, uh, stubbornness like that. They, they don't do that, um, you know, as, as a result of their being compelled to do so. If they were compelled to do so, then Allah is just and merciful and He, he will forgive accordingly. And as we read the, the you know, as our knowledge of the, the narrations about the, the day of Akhirah becomes more and more improved. We will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not wrong any single individual. You know, there, there are even reports in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even, you know, if there were two rams, yes, one of them is horned and the other is not. And the one which has, uh, you know, which has the, the, the horns, if he were to ram into the, the, the other ram, uh, killing it, then they will be resurrected in order for justice to be served. So like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will accord justice and mercy on, on that day to such an extent that no one will have an argument against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, he is not asked about what he does, but they, the individuals, will be questioned as to what they do. Wallahu a'lam. Um, okay. Sorry, we, we've also been, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was it Sarina Ali who said, you know, don't ask too much about this because <laughs> you will only get uh, confused. But is it okay to ask? Well, we know that the, the, the human intelligence, uh, the human aqal, as we said, has its own appetite. Although, in general, we know that the Prophet ﷺ, through his sunnah has, um, uh, let us say, has refrained and has told the prophet, the, the sahaba to refrain from asking certain questions um, like when, when some of them said you know if God created the world who created God then the prophet said you know seek isti'adha from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the whisperings of shaitan uh, these are basically questions to which there is no possible answers to it Yes, or meaning to say they are not, they are worded as questions, but they are not really questions. Because in, in truth, they are just, um, they are just statements which are meaningless. But on the other hand, as the, um, uh, let us say, as the religious tradition began to develop, and as they became, as they came to uh, encounter peoples of different Mm, traditions, uh, then certainly people of certain traditions which is different from Islam, they may naturally ask that questions. And so the, the science of Kalam became developed, became developed by the scholars, meaning to say to defend the itiqadat, to defend the beliefs yes, in, in our religion. Uh, and so they, they began to develop a series of responses 
um, based on uh, their the source of their derivatives or they derive their their knowledge with the combination of the Quran and and their intelligence. And of course, certainly, this is, since this is a, a a science, the the endeavor of which is is a human endeavor, there will be limitations of what explanations can be given. So what can be given in this sense, since you you know you earnestly ask that question, uh, is 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 based on what has been endeavored by our previous scholars, and we do not say that uh, you know some some of these questions, uh, or or that there will not be new questions which can, uh, which cannot be solved and deliberated. But uh, when I attempt to answer uh, the question that you have posed, it is based on uh, my readings of what has been uh, produced by our scholars in the tradition. Uh, uh, but ultimately, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the ultimate guide, and certainly there are certain uh, there are certain things and certain aspects of things that that lie beyond um, our capacity. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Sayyidina Ali, um, you know, when they prefer that that the, the, the pristine faith of the Muslims be preserved uh, as opposed to deliberating on the uh, on some of these philosophical matters. Uh, it is because uh, they speak with the light of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke with the light of revelation. And the case of Sayyidina Ali and the other Sahaba and the, uh, the awliya in this tradition, they speak from the light of wilaya. Yeah? They, they speak from the light of, uh, let us say, intuition. Because they know that with regards, with reference to certain individuals, they might not, they might not be able to comprehend the, the, the explanation anyways. That uh, to such an extent that it is uh, that question is not a meaningful question, or rather that that question will not result in beneficial knowledge compared to, uh, to compared to contemplating about other things. Yes, meaning to say sometimes we want to ask certain things, uh, and the the answer to those things may not be beneficial to us. That such that it is better to to trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on those things. But as for the things that you have just asked now. Well, this is, uh, you know, this has been commented upon, and so taking the the safety, or rather the precaution, the the, the insurance of our previous scholars, we we seek protect we seek protection through uh, through quoting their statements and through rehearsing their defenses. Wallahu a'ala. Assalamualaikum. Shukran. Waalaikum salam. Yes, uh, I would like to comment on the previous question. And uh, say that while there may be dialectic and logical knowledge, there is also experiential knowledge. Therefore, I think the answer to the question of free will and determinism, as Ibn Abbas says, al amr by al amrin, the truth of the matter is between two truths. And when questioned further, he said that he would not speak of it because he would be deemed a heretic. So I, I feel that uh, the the truth of this matter lies in a certain vision of the divine reality. Uh, having commented that, I would like to ask a question, a short one. Uh, is it? Can we say then, when we refer to calamities and imperfections or perceived imperfections within our created universe, that it arises out of a certain necessity? Because necessary, we necessarily we live at the plane of mortal existence where there is generation and decay. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and if I may be permitted to. You know, to quote from Leibniz's defense, he, he spoke of his defense in terms of um, fecundity and in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the limitations of that which comes into existence, including, of course, the laws of generation and decay, uh, corruption and change. Yes, all these things are part and parcel of the, the perfection of the entirety of the super system. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, as 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 we as as we said, you know, uh, that هذا خلق الله yes, الذي هذا سن الله الذي أتقن كل شيء. So in the totality of things, yes, perfection remains while well, allowing for things such as death and calamities and uh, other uh, imperfections. What well, basically what I'm doing is just to uh, to repeat whatever that you have said in a more concise manner. Allah Alam. Uh, no, what, you have said it in a more concise manner, and I, I, I try to deliberate upon it. Thank you, Habib. Okay. 
Wait, you mentioned about uh, you you're just quoting from scholars or elaborating from scholars. W what are a few of the readings that that we should make on this on this for the Uncle Darmeter? Yes, first and foremost, um, as a as a general um, as a general and most direct guide to the Sharah of of Risala to Jamia, I'm relying upon uh, the the, the Sharah of uh, Ahmad Yusuf and Nasak. Uh, his Sharah is called the Budur at Talia. The Budur at Talia. I, I don't believe it's been translated into English. But uh, Dr. Ahmad Yusuf, in his uh, Sharah, um, has relied on the, the works of Imam Al Ghazali, Imam Al Qurtubi, uh, uh, many of the dialectical methods, as, as was asked just now can be found in Imam al-Ghazali's Al-Iqtisad al itiqad That has been translated into English by Dr. al uh, I believe it's called Moderation in Belief. So according to Imam al-Ghazali in the Ihya Ulumuddin, in the Book of Knowledge, he said that the, um, uh, with regards to knowledge of Tawheed, the, the Qadar or the requirement of, of uh, the, the, the minimum requirement that you can be comfortable in the science of Tawheed is to read his book called the Kawa'idun um, Aqa'id. We need to say that it would be sufficient knowledge because he has um, he has summarized in that the, the, the doctrines and the beliefs of the Asha'ira. Uh, but if you require a higher, uh, a higher uh, let us say, statement uh, in which it is more, uh, more argued in a, in a scholarly uh, uh, and a scholastic fashion, then uh, he recommends us to read this al-iqtisad al -iqtisad. According to him, that's already uh, um, uh, the limits because he has he has rehearsed all the the, the, the possible arguments uh, argumentations in a dialectical manner. And certainly, of course, this takes into consideration what Ashraf said just now about how certain aspects of knowledge are better explained uh, in an experiential manner. Uh, meaning to say, what uh, Ibn Abbas said as uh, you know. Bainal Amrain just now. This is what in English or in the Western philosophical tradition is called um, antinomies. Yes, uh, human reason, due to its own limitations, will sometimes encounter antinomies. Yes, uh, an antinomy is a condition in which two beliefs uh, may appear to be uh, uh, contradictory to each other, and not because of the realities of those things, but because of the limitations of human reason, uh, we need to say at the level of, uh, of, of plain consciousness. But there are, as, as we affirm in our epistemology, higher levels of consciousness in which some of these things can, can be understood better. Well, Hashim, uh, so the Iqtisat uh, Kinyatifat. But in the Madrasa tradition and in the Al Ba'alawi tradition, perhaps the, 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 the books that are also used. Um, in more recent times, uh, uh, of course, is the uh, Hashia al al Bayjuri. Yes, uh, Hashia al Bayjuri, um, uh, which is a, a, a commentary on uh, on the book of Tawheed. Uh, there is also in more recent times a book written by um, uh, Al Habib uh, Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafid, the, the, the father of uh, the late father of Habib Umar. Bin Hafiz, it's called a, a concise book, the Durus at Tawheed, but in, uh, it has now been given a, a very substantial commentary by Al Habib Abdullah bin Abdul Ghadir al Habshi, uh, who's now in, in Malaysia. Uh, he, is, uh, he has written a very substantial commentary, the, the, the Sharah, the uh, Durus at Tawheed, that will, will, will certainly have some of these discussions in a more detailed manner, uh, inshallah. I think, I think um, we haven't got any more questions. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll spell the, the name of the books, maybe through email or through um, the WhatsApp group. I, I would need to just reconfirm it uh, later, inshallah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we can, we can stop here and then we can continue next week, inshallah. Uh, thank you very much, Ustaz, and all the all the audience, all the, the students. Um, um, may we benefit from, from the discussion, inshallah, and, and increase our amal.
and iman inshallah do you want to to end the session with a with a with a dua inshallah Insyaallah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya minta izin. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih Ustaz. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih Ustaz. Terima kasih Ustaz. Terima kasih Ustaz.